What up YouTube, it's your girl Dee Dee. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. Now in this particular clip, this woman is complaining about the choices that she made in life and she's seemingly regretting it because she thought that she was gonna get some different outcome. But I'm not gonna talk too much on it. I'm gonna go ahead and play the clip and then I'll give my two cents. But you guys chime in in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on this one. I definitely wanna hear what you have to say. So make sure you let me know in the comments below. If you are new to the channel and you like the content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It is free to subscribe. Also share the video and hit that notification bell to be notified when I upload new content. All right, let's get into the video. Here we go. I have been a single mom for all of two years and I have to say, I hate it here. I don't hate being a mom. I don't hate having kids, but I hate the fact that I only had two options, either stay in an unhealthy dysfunctional relationship or do it all on my own. And see, when I was a stay-at-home mom, I did the cooking, the cleaning. I was a primary person in charge of taking care of the children. And here I thought that that was a totally different category than being a working mom. As a working mom, I'm literally still doing all of the same stay-at-home mom shit, just on a different schedule. But now, with the added mental stress load of how do I pay every bill by myself. And that's not even the part that frustrates me. The kicker is that this is culturally normal and even embrace that if you're a single mom, you're just gonna struggle and that's it. Like I could be on the brink of a mental breakdown, literally underwater telling people like, I do not know how to make this better. And someone will ask me, what's wrong? Are you okay? No, I'm not. And the response is, well, you know, it's hard out here for everybody. And I get it. We all have our challenges. We're all going through our own struggles. But why is it culturally normal for this to be the only other option? Like at this point, I'm about to start dating other moms to see who wants to co-mother together. Because the fact that we're all just isolated, but going through the same exact challenges at the same time, just feels ridiculous. Listen. What do you guys think about what she had to say? Definitely chime in. I want to hear your thoughts on this one. So listen, my thing is this. No situation is perfect. Life isn't perfect. Relationships are not perfect. And I think the fix to all of this is being more responsible with your bodies, being more particular in who you decide to give children to and who you decide to marry, who you decide to be in a relationship with. See, I think a lot of people or not focus on the right things. And I say this all the time. And of course we're human, we make mistakes. I'm not saying you can't make mistakes, but you gotta be very mindful of the choices that you make in life because those choices have consequences. We are living in a society where people do not value marriage or relationships or commitment. And I did hear this woman say she was married. So apparently she left the, the relationship because she deemed it toxic. So she chose to leave the relationship with a child involved or children involved. And I think far too often women are easily triggered, easily ready to walk away from relationships and marriages thinking that the grass is gonna be greener on the other side. Somehow they miraculously think that when they decide to become single mothers, that the other side is gonna yield them some magical outcomes and it's gonna be easier and things are gonna just be handed to them and people are gonna look at them as some type of prize, even more that you are a single mother, that there's some type of incentives to becoming single mothers. So I think when that happens, they don't count up the cost. You don't think about how that is negatively going to impact your life even more when you are doing it all by yourself. And then the funny thing about it is a lot of these women are making babies with men who were not ready for families. They're making lives with men who were not ready for families, who probably weren't really ready for marriage, or sometimes the women themselves are not really ready for marriage and they don't take it as seriously as you should. And she's right, we're living in a, in a society that culturally accepts this type of outcome. They accept and embrace the single motherhood of it all. They embrace women doing it all by themselves. So this is an, is an influence, in my opinion, to wives and other women who think that they don't have it great, think that their lives are boring, think that their, their husbands are not doing as much as they could be doing. The society of single motherhood and independent boss chicks kind of speaks to the married woman or the woman over here who, who actually has a family and has a husband kind of speaks to them to tell them, hey, 
that is not where it's at. Marriage is not all of that. You need to come to our side because you can do whatever you want. You'll have more fun over here. It's liberating. It's empowering empowerment. And you don't need a man. Join us. Let's rally against men. Let's do what we want to do. But then when you do that, you make that mistake because it is a mistake. In my opinion, you end up in a situation that this woman is in. And once again, I don't know her situation because everybody's situation is different, but you don't really hear women talk about the relationship aspect, trying to save their marriages, trying to work through the differences in their marriages. You only hear the outcome of when they decided to leave and, and how they're struggling as a result. So I think it's very important for us to push the narrative that you need to make sure that you prioritize marriage and family and make sure you are making these decisions with a person who also prioritize those things. And that way you can work through difficulties a lot better. And we also got to stress that, hey, relationships aren't a walk in the park. They're not all just simply easy and you don't go through anything because people have this idea that a marriage or a relationship is supposed to be perfect. And he's supposed to do everything you want and there's no obstacles and there's no things that you have to work through. And so people, when they go through stuff, they think that, oh, this is my cue to leave because if it doesn't serve me anymore, then it's time for me to go. But then once you've created children in that cycle, when you've create put children in a mix, now you have to think a little bit broader. You have to understand that it's not just about you, but it's about those children as well. And if you want what's best for your kids, you have to rethink your choices and, and you can't just willy nilly make decisions based off of your own feelings, but you have to make decisions based off of the overall picture and how this is going to affect your children. I don't know. I think a lot of women kind of think the way this woman thinks they think oh well i don't know where they're getting the thinking from but they think that oh once i leave my husband things are going to look up and it's going to be so much better and i'm going to just thrive because women tend to push that narrative that oh the man was holding you back the man was a hindrance and once you drop him like a bad habit then all of a sudden you're going to prosper and thrive and be so great. You're going to make all this money and you're going to have nannies and you're going to have chefs and you're going to have people who's going to just watch the kids and cook and clean and do all this for you while you can sit back and have an easy life. But when that doesn't happen, this is when they're on social media complaining, thinking that it was supposed to be something else than what they're actually experiencing. And this is why you have a lot of women breaking down and confused and and uh, distraught because they don't know what to do because now the load is even more heavier than it was when you were in a relationship. Now, I don't advocate for people to stay in unhealthy marriages. I do not. I think if there's abuse, if there are real situations where your life is involved or in threat of or somebody's abusing you or committing harmful acts towards you, I don't think that that is a healthy relationship at all. And you should get out of it and get help. But if you're talking about just differences, you know, and you don't agree on stuff and you're arguing about different things, that means you need to get some therapy. You need to get some help. You need to find ways to work through your marriage. If it's not something that is abusive, any abusive relationship, let me just, let me stress that. I don't think that anybody should male or female. I don't think that anybody should stay in a relationship that is abusive and life threatening and causing harm to you or your children. I think that is something you should absolutely remove yourself from in the most safest way possible. But if it's not that, if it's just, oh, you feel like you've, you've outgrown the person or you feel like he's not doing as much as you want him to do, or, you know, y'all just having differences and you don't, you feel like you don't want to be in there anymore then you have to check yourself. You have to, you have to look at the bigger picture and what's most important for you and your kids and talk to somebody and work through it because those are not legitimate reasons for you to walk out of your marriage. You know what I'm saying? And especially if you have kids involved and I know there's some people who say, you know what? I don't feel like it's for me. I don't want to worry about the kids or, you know, I'm going to leave and my kids will be fine. No, you have to look at the bigger picture. Once again, if it's not those extenuating situations that will cause you to leave that are warranted, you need to work through your relationships. You need to work through your marriage. You need to make sure you understand each, figure out how to understand each other and work through it. Because after all, that is what a relationship is about. It's not about everything, just when everything is good, you're good, but it's about going through the good and the bad. And you have to learn that is what a relationship is. You can't let modern women in modern society coerce you into thinking that something's wrong with your relationship because you're not getting your way or you're looking at 
somebody else and comparing your relationship to theirs and thinking that yours doesn't measure up. So you need to do something or leave because you can do better. That is not going to benefit you. And you'll find yourself in this very same situation that a lot of these single mothers are in. They didn't prioritize some of them, the right men to have children with. So they're single mothers and they're doing it all by themselves. Or there are women who were married and decided that they outgrew their marriage. So now they're by themselves. And the very same things that you were complaining about in the marriage, now you have way more to complain about while you're doing it all by yourself. So listen, y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. Comment, like, subscribe to the channel. Chime in. I definitely want to hear your thoughts on this one. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye.